Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We have a very harmonic atmosphere and monolithic, and I feel the lack of drama. Uh, there is no enemy, and I am ready to, for half a minute, to sacrifice my reputation and to become a phonetical enemy. Говорит Москва. Решением Центрального комитета КПСС в Венгрию вводят войска. Мы должны оказать помощь братскому народу. That's it. And now I'm, <laughs> now I'm again an ally and a friend. Uh, theoretically, theoretically uh, I could have personal memories about 56, although I was eight years old. Why? On the 8th of November, Hungary and Russians together started deporting prisoners to the Soviet Union. All in all, they sent around 800 people to the Soviet Union, among them more than 60 teenagers, among them nine girls. And they were situated not just in Siberia, on the border, they were uh, imprisoned in Ushgarat, first of all. Half of them, Ushgarat, it's the capital of Transylvania, uh, Transcarpathia. But the rest of them were distrib distributed between Dragobych, Lviv district area, uh, Stanislav, presently Ivana Frankovsk, and Chernovitz. So, why pers I could have personal memories? Because if my, I lived in Chernovitz, my family was living in Chernovitz. And if my father was a prison governor in Chernovitz, or where uh, the warden, I think the English word for prison uh, governor, if my father were, I can imagine that one evening in November, he comes home, distressed and says, oh, uh, my prison bursts of new prisoners. Those Hungarian fascists were brought to us. And what should we do with them? And he would take, um, not like my father, but this illu illusion, illusionary father, he would take a glass of Garilka, it's a Ukrainian vodka, or Romanian, Romanian Tsuika, it's a moonshine. Or, or Moldavian Bessarabian wine, why not? Chernovitz. And uh, later he would share with us new and new stories about those uh, prisoners because those, there was the evolution, because there was a scandal, because 800 people, it, it's a lot of. So uh, Hungarian government asked the Soviets to soften the regime and uh, those people who were in those prisons were allowed even to use prison kiosk, prison stall. What does it mean? It means they could, uh, could uh, buy uh, uh, sweets uh, which were made from sugar, actually. It's nothing, nothing sugar and a kind of uh, juice, I don't know. But what was more important, they could buy toothbrushes and tooth powder. At that time, there was a deficit of toothpaste in the Soviet Union. So in a way, those foreigners were even privileged, could be privileged in this uh, uh, prison. And I can imagine, uh, you know what uh, palimpsest means. It's putting a, a new, uh, a, a new uh, text on papyrus, for instance, or manuscript, old manuscripts, a new strata, or in, in painting, new painting on painting. But there is a, a wonderful genre, uh, uh, hardly, hardly known to you because of your experience, I think. There is a prison palimpsest, palimpsest when prisoners, after prisoners, they write something on prison walls. And from that point of view, Chernovitz prison is wonderful. It's a monument, I think, to prison palimpsest because it's multicultural, multi-language city. 
So you could, you could scra scrap one after another straight. Uh, you could find, I think, inscriptions in German, of course, it's former Austro-Hungarian Empire, next to Romanian, Ukrainian as well, because Romanians during the campaign for uh, uh, Romanization of Bukovina, they pursued the so-called uh, Ukrainian nationalists. So one could find there, I, I think, even Shevchenko's uh, poetry, because Shevchenko's book Kabzai was forbidden in Romania, by the way. Uh, so, so next, uh, Soviet prisoners. Anyway, anyway, Hungarians could be proud that one could find their Hungarian inscriptions uh, as well in Chernovitz prison. But uh, uh, being, being back uh, to, uh, our, uh, to our issue, uh, what was the, generally the atmosphere? Uh, for instance, uh, uh, any generation uh, uh, is produced by crucial events. And if, uh, for instance, for me, for my generation and those who are younger, we are not World War the second generation. We are not Hungarian, uh, 56 generation, but, but, but we were already uh, the generation of 68 occupation of Czechoslovakia, of Poland, Gdansk. So we had our, our generally events. Uh, by, 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 the, by, the, by the way, um, as for my real father, he was a uh, journalist in Chernovitz. No, uh, to be a journalist means to be a communist journalist. And uh, just to show you uh, what was specific Soviet finesse of Soviet children. In 58, my father got a heart attack. Why? Because he published an article in his regional newspaper and he was reprimanded by the party committee because he did not criticize enough and sh more sharp Joseph Broz Tito, Yugoslavian dictator. So I, I'm giving this example just to show you uh, the difference in mentality, w w what, it, what it meant, finesse for a Soviet child. So I, I, I was, I, at 10 years I already knew such strange details which would never come to mind to American or, or French children. Uh, any, any, anyway, being back, being back to the atmosphere generally, 1956, um, it was a time of uh, hopes because it was the Communist Party uh, uh, Congress of Destalinization, Khrushchev's speech. And it was the time which gave the uh, new atmosphere and new hopes uh, uh, for many people, and the whole generation in culture was produced by that. But as if this Hungary, um, Hungary occupation and intervention stopped this period. So the, the thaw, T-H-A-W, lasted less than a year. Uh, Hungary stopped the thaw. Not many people understood it. But uh, anyway, anyway, uh, there were no mass protests in the Soviet Union against intervention. Unlike to 68 with Czechoslovakia, when society was already more or less mature, mature. But there are simply small examples, singular examples. Nine students in, in Leningrad made leaflets, one student in uh, Yaroslav, uh, and those leaflets uh, were praising Hungarian revolution, but when they tried already to spread illegally, the revolution was already cracked. So even those leaflets were, were extra, were, were, they, they, were, they, they were out of time already. Any, anyway, those cases were very, very seldom, and the general mood was, uh, there was very such a provincial Russian city, Yaroslavl, there was a lonely piquet of over 18 years old boy of Armenian origin with a leaflet. He was grabbed by the crowd, beaten, and on hands taken to the police. And it was the will of the people. It was not repressive regime. It was, it was simple average people like that. Uh, what, what, what else was taking place? Before 
I, as, as a writer, I am especially interested in writer's situation. What was in 1956? Uh, not far away uh, from those events, uh, a Russian cultural ambassador to the West, French-speaking Ilya Erinburg, was sent uh, to, to Western Europe, and he stayed here in Budapest, and he was invited by Rakoshi, and Rakoshi said to him, look, I have problems here. Could you speak to our writers? And Edinburgh, he didn't know the atmosphere. He came to writers, and it was the nest of reaction from communist point of view. And Edinburgh came, and, and he was inspired by 20th century. He started speaking more freely. And he said, the most of all, I hate editors, red and blue pencil. And the writer started applauding. And Rakashi was so disappointed because as if, uh, as if Ehrenburg inspired them uh, to, 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 to a kind of a position. Later, Ehrenburg was reprimanded in Moscow because in central committees they decided that red pencil is not editors, it's, it's a communist, communist regime symbol. Uh, and anyway, so Ehrenburg um, was here, disappointed uh, Rakashi. Next, uh, uh, the intervention started. And here, uh, simply interesting, look, for me, the, 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 the uh, writer's behavior, because uh, imminent should be freedom for writers. No, uh, they wrote uh, letters. There was one collective letters of, of uh, Soviet writers. Uh, and in such letters always are interesting for me, liberal persons, li people from whom we don't expect that. And among them were, by that time, very famous prominent writers like uh, Konstantin Polstovsky. Uh, I, I don't know whether it says anything to you, but at that time he was popular, especially in, not only in the Soviet Union, in Germany. And uh, later Marlene Dietrich, for instance, when she came to Moscow, uh, she on public kneeled down to Polstovsky. So he was such a great figure. He was a candidate for Nobel Prize winner together with Sholokhov. But uh, Polstovsky signed. Uh, uh, next, next uh, 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 Pasternak did not, by the way, uh, sign this letter. Anna Akhmatova did not. So it was a, a kind of choice. It was a, a kind of m m moral choice. Uh, even in the family, it was a split. There is a classic of Russian literature for children, Tchaikovsky. He did reject signing this letter, but his son did, 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 did sign. So, so the split was even in the family. Uh, and uh, in different, later Brodsky said, his friends writing members, that the intervention to Budapest, to Hungary, was uh, uh, much more important than the 20th uh, Congress and desalinization speech of Khrushchev. Uh, I think he was right. Uh, and the atmosphere grew sour in Moscow. By that time, after intervention, two prominent French men came. It was Yves Montan, uh, and it was Simone Signore. Yes, a couple, yeah, an actress. And in France, many people blamed them for visiting after Hungary, Moscow. But in Moscow, after all, after all three people, there was two meetings with Khrushchev and Soviet leadership, and they, like stubborn idiots, asked again and again, why Hungary, why did you do it? And Khrushchev twice gave them one hour speech. So, so I'm speaking about the atmosphere uh, in, in Moscow. Um, as for, as, as for not, not Moscow and province, we, we uh, almost know, almost nothing, happened, almost nothing is known. Only somewhere in 2011, um, there was publication about events in Hungary. They called it uh, officially events, of course not revolution, but if you call it counter-revolution, it means that it's something powerful. So, so the Soviet official propaganda calls, called it events in Hungary to avoid. Yeah? So uh, only in 2011 there were 2,000 uh, small books, pamphlets, published for the P 
people working for KGB and militia about those events. And there are some small uh, details, details, for instance, uh, uh, the reaction among officers, uh, military officers, to the, to the uh, uh, intervention. And there are examples, for instance, there were party meetings among uh, military officers, and they protested in which they, they protested. First, they blamed destalinization and said that the uh, revolution in Hungary was the product of uh, this liberalization. So there were dissidents, but reactionary dissidents. Uh, what uh, actually are consequences of uh, all of it? Mm, uh, in 1992, Yeltsin uh, was in Hungary and said about repentance, uh, conscience, and forgiveness. And he prepared a draft uh, which was rejected by the Russian parliament because 1992 already one felt this new reactionary spirit. A later president, nowadays president in Slovakia in 2006, said that the pact of Molotov and Ribbentrop was right. Uh, it's as if something superficial, but going in depth, going in depth, Hungary forever, because, because there is a revenge for something bad, what you do, uh, as a nation, as a state, whatever. Uh, I remember in my times, Soviets uh, hated uh, Ronald Reagan because he named uh, the Soviet Union the empire of evil. And he, uh, I think it's a kind of quotation from Tolkien, something. it's my feeling. Anyway, but another person, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, wrote a novel called Cancer Award. And this metaphor does work till now. What is the sense of cancer? It lives in spreading. So cancer should spread. Cancer what should become a hospital. Ne next, the city of hospitals. That's how it goes, and the revenge for Hungary is that Russia became a kind of cancer ward, and it again needs food for its cancer. That's why Hungary goes on. Now it could be called Georgia. Now it could be called Ukraine, but anyway, the reward, the, the, the revenge, the revenge for Hungary goes on. It's full of life. Uh, and what we see and what we saw metaphysically, not politically, that Russia demonstrated the will for death. Yes, death is beautiful. Death could be very attractive. It's the element of culture. And some cultures prefer and choose death. And Russia chooses death. And Ukraine doesn't want to die. And Georgia doesn't want to die. So metaphysically speaking, we, we, we facing the, the, the fight between the will for life and will for death. And Hungary was among the first cultures which showed will for life. Thank you very much.